All right, so this one we can do, let's do this one together. So this is the function. We are assuming all initial conditions are zero. We want to find a lot the solution to this using the Laplace transform. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. What about taking the Laplace transform to start? What is Laplace transform of y dot or the first derivative of y? Hmm? This s times y of s. Laplace transform of y of t is y of s. And the Laplace transform of sine of 3t is? The Laplace transform of sine of 3t is? What is it? That's number seven, sine of 3t, three divided by s squared plus nine. There it is. We can isolate for i y of s here. That's s plus one. This is three s squared plus nine. Oops, and y of s is three over s plus one, s squared plus nine. Now we are stuck. This is not going to be in a table of Laplace transform. What do we do? Partial fraction. What are the partial fractions for this? Okay, now I'm not gonna answer that one. You can stay here until the end of the class if nobody answers. What is the partial fraction for that? Come on, folks. What is the partial fraction for it? Anybody? We have two terms. The first one is S plus one. So what goes on top? Anybody? Um, first term is gonna be A over S plus one. Thank you. And the second term? Um, BS plus C over S squared plus nine. Excellent, x squared plus nine, very good. Very, very good. Now we need to find a, b, and c. So we can rewrite this expression, let's put it here. We can take a common denominator here, which is simply the multiplication of the two. And to rearrange this equation as a, s squared plus nine plus b, s plus one. We see that if you expand this and divide by the denominator, we go back there. So our, oh, so, sorry, I made a mistake there. B S plus C times S plus one. B S plus C times S plus one. And this is supposed to be equal to the original function. Three S plus one S squared plus nine. All right, now these denominators are the same. They will cancel out. We can expand this is a squared plus nine plus b s squared plus b s plus c s plus c. And this is supposed to be equal to three. What do we do now? Well, now we can equate or group the coefficients. Uh, a s squared here, sorry, a s squared. All right, it's the first term, a s squared plus nine a multiply. Multiply there. Let me just fix that. A S squared plus nine A, right? This two plus B S squared plus B S plus C S plus C. Okay. Now we can group the terms with S squared. 
And these are A plus B, A plus B. We can group the terms with S. Those are B plus C. And you can group the terms with S to the power of zero. Those are 9A plus C, and this is equal to three. Now here you can create a system of equations by equating the coefficients of S squared on the, well, the coefficients of S squared to the coefficients of S squared of the other end. S squared on this side here has A plus B. S squared on the other side is zero. So A plus B equals to zero. We can do the same for S. B plus C multiplies by one, which in this case here on the other side is zero. And coefficients of S to the power of zero on this side, we have nine A plus C. On the other side, we have three. From these two equations, if you combine them, we can find that, uh, what do you find there? We find that A equals to, uh, A equals to C, isn't it? A equals to C. I multiply the bottom one by negative one and then add them together. We have A minus C equals to zero, A equals to C. And you can now replace this in here. We now have 9a plus a equals to 3. So a equals to 3 over 10, which is the same as c. And the b we can take from any of these two. b is negative 3 over 10. Are, are we good with this? That's the coefficient a, b, and c. Any questions here? I'll just erase the top there for now. Any questions? Time is it? Yeah. No. Could you please repeat again uh, how you got how you got a plus b equals to zero, b plus c is equal to zero, and, and yeah, those two, please. Yeah. So uh, we are are we good up to this equation here? Yeah. Yeah. So now we can create a system of equations by equating the coefficients of s on this side of the equation with the coefficients of s on the other side of the equation. So on this side, everything that multiplies s squared is a plus b, and this side here we have plus zero times S squared. So if you equate the coefficients, A plus B equals to zero. Okay. B plus C multiplies S on this side here. We don't have S, we have zero times S. So B plus C equals to zero. Okay. And then you're left with nine A plus C. This multiplies S to the power of zero. And on the other side, you have three s to the power of zero. So they equate as well. That gives the last one. Yes. All right, thanks. OK, so let me erase this. We found the values we wanted. Let's go back and plug them in there. And then finally solve. I'm going very fast through these partial fractions because I'm assuming that this is not new to uh, it's, um, you probably saw this a long time ago, so a refresh doesn't hurt. So what we found was A equals to C equals to 10, uh, 3 over 10, right? Was that? Yeah. And B was negative 3 over 10, so I can factor out that, so negative S plus one over S squared plus nine. All right, so minus three, th three over 10 plus three over 10 for C. This expression here we won't find in the table, so we can expand that three over 10 times 
uh, actually negative three over 10 s s squared plus nine and plus three over 10 one over s squared plus nine. Now we can find the inverse Laplace transform. Oh, sorry, this is not positive. This is multiplying. This is multiplying, yeah. What is the inverse Laplace transform of three over 10? Well, that's three over 10. The inverse Laplace, because it multiplies that, what is the inverse Laplace of one over S plus one? We go to the table, that is number two is exponential of negative t. What is the Laplace transform of that? If you go to the table, that is number eight. S divided by S squared plus A is cosine of A t. So that gives cosine of three t. And what is the Laplace transform of the last one? Last one is, three over 10. We won't find this on the table because we need some extra numbers on top here. That would be number seven. Number seven says that the Laplace transform of A divided by S squared plus A is sine of A T A divided by S squared plus A squared, excuse me, plus A squared. So here we have A squared is nine. We need to make a A on top. So we need three, a squared is nine, a is three. So we can multiply this by three, but also divided by three, otherwise we are changing the value of the equation. And now this is exactly the format we want. This is sine of a t. So this is plus something sine of a, which is three, three t. So this whole part here became that. And this one now simplifies three divided by three is one or one over 10. Okay. Questions? Questions here? No. All right, the last part of the equation, the, the, the question asks to relate the poles of this with the time response. By poles, I mean the values of S in the denominator that will make the denominator go to zero. Why are we interested in these particular points? Because we know that the Laplace transform, if you remember that a graphical representation, a graphical representation will spike, will go to infinity when the values of S tend, tend to, will make the denominator of the function zero. And depending on where they are located on the omega sigma plane, that will give us exponential sinusoidal components or so on. So let's see what happened here. If you plot this time response, this is what we get. What do we see? We see a sinusoidal waveform, that, it, that that's, that's it. And we also see a exponential waveform here that kind of decays and disappears very fast. So there is an exponential component. If you take the average of the signal, the average is something like that. And to this average, we add a sinusoidal waveform. So you see this little jump in the beginning here. Where are these terms coming from? Well, if you look at this term, this term, the value of S that it makes that zero is S equal to negative one. This is a real number. And because it's a real number, it will be placed on the real axis and we will only create sinusoidal components, the exponential, uh, excuse, excuse me, only exponential components. Remember that S equals to sigma plus J omega. In this case, sigma is negative one, omega is zero. No exponential, only no sinusoidal, only exponential. So this term is what is creating this original initial exponential component that decays and disappears. Now let's look at these two terms. These two terms are S squared 
plus 9 equals to 0, s equals to plus minus 3j. In this case, we have sigma equals to 0, omega equals to plus minus 3j. So if you plot that a three-dimensional plot for the Laplace transform for the signal, we'll see two spikes when omega, when s equals to plus minus 3j. We see that a sigma is 0 and omega is not 0. So this is a purely exponential waveform. And that's what creates the exponential component. That is to say that we didn't have to take the inverse Laplace transform of y of s to know what kind of signal we are dealing with, because that is already provided in the values of s that make the denominator zero in here. This is a real number, so this will create an exponential component. This is a purely imaginary number, so this will create a sinusoidal waveform. If we had something with both sigma and omega being non-zero, then that would, would also create an exponential times a sinusoidal waveform combined. Right? So once again, we have the time response, so we know what to expect. But if you look one step above here, we can come to the same conclusions by just looking at the value of the values of S that make the denominator zero. 